Hello, Mr. Gigabytes here. And today we're going to be putting a Raspberry Pi into one of these retro keyboard cases. And what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, we'll start with uh, just, just the basics. We're not going to go through on how to install RetroPie or anything. But I do have that loaded onto an SD card, as you'll see later. Uh, this case is uh, uh, going as as a is a prototype. It will be a little bit different than what you'll see, or what the what the finished product will actually be. Uh, one example is those USB ports on the side. Uh, those will not necessarily be there on the final product, and the. Uh, and I have gone ahead and removed the power button uh, from the side of the case uh, as this is not needed uh, for the Raspberry Pi. However, if you were to use a certain Pi hat, you could still use a uh, uh, use the power button and connect it up that way. We're also going to connect the LED light up and what I've done is uh, in my playing around, the original LED for this particular case was actually, uh, I actually burnt it out by hooking it up to 5 volts instead of 3.3. So we've gone ahead and replaced that. You'll see that, uh, that little patch later. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get started here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put the power brick and the USB cable aside, and I'm going to go ahead and finish installing the little standoffs. Now these are a little bit longer standoffs than what you would get with the case, but uh, uh, I'm just using longer standoffs just uh, just because I happen to have them. So. Uh, but the, they're essentially the same standoffs. The case is actually uh, is actually tapped so that uh, the standoffs thread pretty easily through there. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm actually going to start the screws into the board itself. Now these particular screws that I'm using are nylon screws so they're just a little bit bigger than the than than metal screws and they and they tend to stick a little better gives me a little bit of an advantage the one downside is that they're not magnetic and so I can't just stick them on the end of the screwdriver and expect them to stick so I'm gonna pre-thread them through the board now if you're using metal screws uh, that shouldn't be an issue. And one of these screws is a little difficult to get to. So I'm just going to set it on the bench and we're going we're gonna to screw that in to the board with the screwdriver. And tighten up the other screw as well. The other two I've already I've already done in advance, and you can see the uh, the 64 gigabyte card I've already inserted. I've already installed RetroPie on it, just to show you something at the end. And we're going to go ahead and mount that in the case. You notice I haven't even taken the the keyboard plate out of the case. There's actually plenty of room here to work on the Raspberry Pi without without taking the keyboard plate off. We will be taking that off eventually. Now one of the tricks here is to get a short screwdriver you can use the longer screwdriver. I've got a six inch Phillips screwdriver there. You can use that and the case is flexible enough. You just flex it a little bit. You can get at those two screws. But a smaller Phillips bit 
can actually go in underneath that that plate and uh, it fits it fits pretty pretty well and I'm gonna go ahead and take that that keyboard plate off just to, so I have a little better access there's one screw on one side one screw on the other side and one one of the things to note about the the these cases is that four or four centimeter plate up on the top with the LED that has to be glued down so that it gives the case a a, a bit more reinforcement. Uh, we've toyed around with the, having a, a removable plate; it just didn't work out that well. So, uh, so we decided we'll just go ahead and glue it in, and and uh, uh, those screws that that end up underneath that plate, it's, they'll be a little difficult to get to, but certainly nothing that can't be worked around. And I had one of the screws fall out, so I'm going to go ahead and we'll just tighten this, this one up before I put that other screw in there. Set that aside for now. Now on this I did have a little bit of problems trying to get that to thread. It didn't quite catch immediately. And what I'm doing, I'm just holding the bit in place with my left hand and then turning it with my right just between my thumb and my middle finger. These are just nylon screws, nylon standoffs, so of course there will be metal screws with the final product. The, the nylon screws I have an abundance of, so that's what I'm using here. And they seem to work okay. And this is the technique I was describing earlier with the using the longer screwdriver. And just flexing the case a little bit just to get the get at the those screws. The, the bit in this case just wasn't uh, wasn't quite working out the way I wanted it to and I was able to get that other screw tightened down. You may want to use a uh, use a back plate for this. Uh, there are also products where you can mount a Raspberry Pi to a standard uh, ITX plate and of course the uh, the case is already pre-drilled for, for an ITX motherboard and then you would be able to just slot that into place but in this case we'll just keep it open and it's not going to hurt anything there's going to be a lot of room in this case for play there's going to be plenty of room for a fan if you want one we're of course not putting a power supply in so the so the left hand side of the case the the smaller hole there uh... smaller rectangular hole that we would normally use for a flex ATX power supply that isn't going to be used. Now we turn that around, we've got that all plugged in. Now I'm plugging in the LED light to the 3.3 volt and the ground. Now the, the white wire goes to ground, the red wire goes to 3.3 volts and it is pin 1 and pin 9 so you skip three pins on that GPIO panel. So I'm going to go ahead and put that keyboard plate back in. Now we're going to go ahead and plug the keyboard in. I'm not going to set it in the tray right away. I'm just going to set it off to the side. We're going to plug it into into one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. And for this we don't need an adapter or anything. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this controller in. I'm hoping to use it as a gamepad later. And we'll see uh, I'll see if I can configure it and uh and use it as a uh as a joystick of sorts. And of course it's a little wireless re uh RII gamepad. I'm going to take the ethernet cable. I don't plan I've set this up wirelessly. I don't plan I, I'm using it wirelessly so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug the Ethernet cable in
plugging the uh, HDMI in, and this uh, this HDMI cable is a little short, so I had to move it over. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and place that keyboard inside. Of course, we have plenty of room for that uh, that USB cable. We put the top in first and just kind of rotate it down. And we give it a nice firm push to get it nice to get it seated properly. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug the uh, plug the power brick in. Now I've, I'm using a two amp power brick from one of my Amcrest cameras, and just a spare USB Type B cord. As my Raspberry Pi didn't come with it, I just bought the Pi without the kit. As you can see, the little light comes on, nice and bright. This light is actually a little bit brighter than the ones that uh, that are typically that typically connect to an ATX motherboard. So I'm going to go ahead and make some camera adjustments now and and uh, zoom out and try to get that get that monitor as much as you can. And just in that little time, the, the Raspberry Pi is already booted up. I apologize. This is, it, we're gonna have, when we zoom in, it's not gonna be real clear, but you'll kind of get the idea. I'll do some screenshots here in a little bit uh, directly from Vice, so you can see some actual gameplay. Skipping ahead here, you can kind of see the Commodore 64 logo, and I, I've got quite a few Commodore 64. Uh, ROMs and game images and and that type of thing. Now what I've what I've done here, and I will probably just skip over this. This is where I tried to configure the the D-pad. What I found was is that that pad is actually configured as a as a keyboard. So no matter how I tried to configure it, it always it, it would never configure itself as a separate device. It always thought the keyboard was a keyboard and it also didn't make any difference once you went into device the all that configuration just sort of went out the window anyway so instead of showing you Donkey Kong or Pac-Man which you've probably seen a million times I figured I'd show you this little text-based game which is one of the first games I learned how to play on the Commodore 64 when I was eight years old I'm currently modifying the code to make it a little more visually appealing, more interesting, but uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.